Want to see some magic? Check this out. Let's say you want to add some more details to the sky, maybe decrease the highlights. So you're going to go to develop. And now, instead of just decreasing the highlights all over the image, here's what you do. You go to masking and have a look at this. Here you have AI mask. Have a look at this animation. So cool, isn't it? Now, as soon as it's done analyzing the entire image, it only has to do it once. Have a look. It shows what it has detected. The sky, the architecture, the water. I don't know what architecture it's detecting here. But anyway, if you click on the sky, have a look at this. The sky is selected. If you click on the mountains, the mountains are selected. If you want to go ahead and select the sky with the mountain, just click on both. Now the sky and the mountains are selected. Now, look how cool is that? So all you have to do is to go ahead and select the sky, go back to adjustments and maybe just decrease the whites and maybe decrease the highlights and increase the shadows. That's up to you. After develop, let's say you want to add some more enhancement or oomph to the mountains. So for that, let's say we go to the landscape and we increase the golden R effect. We dehaze it a little bit. We enhance the foliage and then also change the hue of the foliage. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? And let's say you only want it to apply to the mountains. So go to the masking. I told you it only has to do it once. So again, it didn't have to process. It's already there. So let's go ahead and select the mountains. And it's only applied in the mountains now. So have a look. Here's the before, here's the after, only in the mountains. Trust me, this is not even the beginning and there are so many more magic tricks up its sleeve. And today I'm excited to share with you the top seven crazy features of Luminar Neo and we'll explore how it holds up in the real world. And also have some good news for you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of AI this time and Luminar Neo definitely has come a long way. So I've been testing the latest version of Luminar Neo which came out a week ago. So I've been testing it for a week rigorously and not once it has crashed on me or lagged down or anything of that sort happened. So I have to say that it's the most stable version of Luminar that I have ever used. Now sometimes it might take a little more time processing but it just works. I'm so happy to say that it's much faster and way more stable than its older sibling, which is Luminar AI. Luminar AI works fantastic as well, but as you can see, it's still taking time loading all the images. However, if you look at Luminar Neo right here, all of the images are already loaded. So if I open up my catalog, everything is just swift and just way faster. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of Luminar AI and Luminar Neo applying Bokeh and that too after applying 15 filters already. As a brand new document, both have about the same speed but as you keep on adding filters, that's when Luminar Neo shines because it works as layers. We can explore that later. By the way, if you're interested in getting Luminar Neo, check the links in the description for the latest discounts and codes. Whatever maximum discount is available, I'll keep it updated for you. And here's the good news. They're so confident about Luminar Neo that for the first time with Luminar AI, Luminar Neo and all of that, you are getting a seven day absolutely free trial so that you can try it for yourself and see if it's for you. You can throw in your own images, see how the AI reacts and test it yourself. The link to the free trial is exclusively available in the description and at the moment of recording this video, it's not even available on their main page. So it's just for you. Now let's get to the features. One of the most exciting features, Relight AI allows you to control the brightness according to the depth of the image. So let's say in this case, as you can see, the subject is nearby to the camera and it's too dark. So let's say I want to increase the brightness of nearby areas so all you do is just increase the brightness and there you go. We don't want to increase it that much and this fixes the issue. Have a look at how accurate this is. Now, of course, you can go ahead and control the depth of how much is nearby and how much is far away. You can also decrease the brightness or increase the brightness of the far away areas. And we're going to look at that at subsequent examples. Now, as with any AI photo editing technology, it's not 100% perfect. We can learn how to fix that. So in this case, as you can see, the subject is very dark. The light is on the opposite side. Now, I just don't want to increase the shadows and make the image faded. I just want to brighten the nearby areas. But there's a problem with that. If you increase the brightness near, and it does a perfect job. Have a look right here. It selects this area and that area as well. And some of the hair selection might not be accurate. So how do we fix that? The first way is opening up the advanced settings. And sometimes with hair, you might see halos. So the dehalo slider simply just takes care of it. Have a look at it. So here's the before. And if I increase the dehalo, have a look around the edge. It gets better, especially right here. But this area, have a look, it's still brighter. So again, how do we take care of that? You go to masking and simply take the brush, select erase, take a soft brush and erase it from there. As simple as that. And if there were some here, you would erase from there as well, but it's taken care of with the dehalo. And there you go, my friend. Fantastic, isn't it? So here is the before and here is the after. Again, here, of course, you can control the depth as to how much of an area do you want to brighten. So I'm going to keep it this way and it's done. Now, if you're an experienced photo editor, one question might come to your mind and that's a very valid question. Once I have masked it, what if I want to darken 
the background areas or the faraway areas, what will happen then? That might be a problem. Let's take a look at that. So here, if we increase the brightness of the nearby areas, the subject gets brighter. That's nicer. But have a look. The hair areas seems a little funky. So we will just increase the dehalo. And that fixes most of that. But still, let's say if you want to work with brushes, there might be an issue. So if you go to masking, and if you go to the brush, and if you choose erase, and let's say you erase it from here. That's nice. That's fine. And it fixes the issue. But right now, what if you want to decrease the brightness of the far away areas? Because those areas are masked out. If I try to do that, have a look, <laughs> that mask shows up. How do we get around this problem? That is why Luminar Neo works in layers. See how it works. So first of all, if we decrease the brightness, have a look, these areas are being created. Instead of working on that, just close relighting. All right, click on relighting again. By doing that, you're adding another layer of relight. Have a look at this. If you go to edits, this is the layer of relighting that you have already added. On top of it, if you do anything right here, that would be another layer of relighting. So what if you do it on another layer? So right now, I'm decreasing the brightness of the faraway areas and have a look. It's no more a problem. And if you go to edit, have a look. This is our second layer of relighting. So what if you're still having issues, 1% of the cases, and you also want to darken some areas of the subject? what to do then? Well, then don't use Relight. Use the next feature, AI Mask. Mask AI is really hands down the coolest feature I've come across in Luminar Neo. So let's say, back to this case, we want to darken the background. So let's delete this second layer of Relight. We don't need it. We're going to go back to our tools. And let's say in the develop panel, we just decrease the whites or the highlights. That's up to you. So let's decrease the highlights. And that's what I wanted to do. And only with the background. So We'll go to masking, AI mask. Again, it's going to analyze the image. I really love this animation. As you move the mouse, animation moves. So it has detected human, sky, flora, architecture, so many things. So all we want to select is human. It makes a selection of that. And we want to invert the mask. So let's get back to masking and mask actions. We want to invert it. So only in the background, it's going to apply. So now you can decrease the highlights, do whatever you want. That's up to you. You can increase some smart contrast. And whatever you're doing, you can edit the mask. So you can go to the mask, go to the brush, and let's say you want to dig into the edges of the subject. So you just paint right there. There you go. That's how you dig in. This is so easy to edit. And here's the final result. Before, after. And trust me, all of this can be done in less than five minutes. And if you don't believe me, wait till the seventh feature. It just is crazy. If you're already excited about AI masking, watch this. And by the way, if you open a raw image, you have a new filter called develop raw. This is just for raw. Anyway, we just want to work with the sky right now. So first of all, let's decrease the highlights so that we have more details in the sky. And on top of it, we'll do the AI masking. So let's go to enhance AI and increase accent AI. I really love what it's doing to the sky. And that is just where we want to keep it. A little bit of it, a little bit of sky enhancer. And then in the masking, AI mask. That's it. You want to keep it just to the sky? Keep it to the sky. Done. Now, similarly, Structure AI just adds so much drama to the clouds. Again, you don't have to do the masking anymore. It's already done. So let's click on the sky. It's already analyzed. Done. Now, here's the great part. If you think the water is getting too blue, wait till you watch the automatic masking of water. So let's go to develop and let's go to color and let's increase the temperature. And we only want to apply it to the water. So now if you go to masking right here, AI mask, have a look at the selection of water right here. It's just excellent. So select water and take a look. Crazy, isn't it? Now you can play with the temperature right here and make it according to what you like. And similarly, you can just edit the sky, add more colors to it. And here as well, I'm just going to add a lot of landscape, increase the dehaze, increase the golden hour, and increase the foliage enhancer, change the hue of the foliage. And there you go. And on top of that, if you want to enhance it, just increase the accent AI. That's it. Now for the nearby areas, you want a little more brightness. So what is the filter that we just learned about? Relight AI. So let's open up Relight AI. And for the nearby areas, just increase brightness near. This seems about right. And faraway areas also need a little bit of brightness. So you can adjust it according to you. Now at the moment, I feel the highlights are too much in the sky. Then you can just select the sky and decrease the highlights. And everything that you do stacks up as layers. And you can always go back and edit any of these. So let's say you find that there are too many highlights. So you can open up the develop pack and decrease the highlights even further. And then get back to tools. All of the edits will turn back on. And with a little more slider tweaking, here, my friend, is the final result. Take a look before after. Moving on to the AI power line removal tool, and we're going to test it with simple, medium, and complex images. Now, looking at this image, you might say, Unmesh, that's very easy. I can just literally take a spot healing brush tool and just draw 
lines across these lines. Well, you can do that, but still you have to take the time to draw the lines, right? You can hold the shift for it, but that's also available here. What if we could do it in just one button? Well, let's see if it works. Let's open up Erase and click on Remove Power Lines. You can barely even see it. And if there were some areas, you can easily fix it. Moving on to the second example where we will do it. Now this, my friend, is really complicated. I'm treating it as medium for you. So let's go to Erase. I'm not gonna speed up the video so you know how much time it takes. So I've clicked right there and let's see. Now we might have to make some adjustments. Have a look, it's, it's done. It was pretty fast. Now it left it out, no problem with that. Just simply click on Erase and paint over that. If there are any other areas that you wanna repair, paint that as well and click on Erase gone. You already know how much time this would have taken if you were to do it manually. Even with content aware fill, you still have to go ahead and select all of that. Now, let's move on to something very, very complicated. I'm absolutely sure that this is something you have to do manually. Take a look at this. This looks impossible. Now, if you go to erase and if we try to remove power lines and don't get your hopes up, it will mess up. Have a look. And it did mess up. So you can take your time and paint all of this. Now, it still does give you a pretty good starting point and click on erase and there you go. By the way, the shift trick works here as well. If you want to draw it in a line, just dab once, hold the shift key, dab right there, and then click on erase. That area is taken care of as well. Moving on to the next feature, my friend, and that is the dust removal AI. Many a times we just forget to clean our sensor. It catches dust sometimes and all of the images, there are some <laughs> dust. Now, this, my friend, is a challenging image for Luminar Neo because now you have these birds which it might consider as dust and you also have all of this sensor dust. So let's see if it works right here. Let's see if it accidentally removes some birds. So let's go to Erase again and click on Remove Dust Spots. And take a look. This is so good and I'm so happy that it didn't accidentally consider the birds as dust. Now it has not done it completely 100%, so we might have to do some manual stuff. Not hard. Click on Erase. Now, when it comes to sky replacement, Luminar has always been the hands down champion right here. And it still does the best sky replacement. Now, after Luminar, Photoshop also came up with sky replacement, but then Luminar amped up by coming up with sky replacement with reflection. So in this case, let's say if we replace the sky, and I'm gonna use this set right here, which is Epic Sunsets by Elia Locardi. This is a wonderful set. By the way, if you're looking for skies, check out Skylum's website. They have some fantastic sky packs that if you're interested in sunrise or sunsets, I recommend Colorful Sunrises and Epic Sunsets. And also California Sunsets is good too. They're all amazing sets. For the quality of these skies, they're also very reasonably priced, especially if you're a professional. And the great part is they come in high quality TIFF format as well, many of these packs. If you are interested in checking out the skies that I recommend or you want to get any sky that you want, I might have some links and discount codes that's going to get you even more discount on top of the reasonable pricing. Let's take a look at this. So any sky that you select here looks just so amazing. Whatever you select, it's very quick to change. Take a look at this. And anytime you change the sky, have a look at the reflection. That also changes. So let's say we choose the sky. And then we have to flip it, of course, because if you have a look at the original image, the light is coming from the right hand side. So let's flip it by checking this box. Now, of course, you can open the reflection and increase the reflection amount. Now take a look. As you change the horizon position, the reflection changes as well. What Luminar Neo does best is relighting the entire landscape or the image according to the sky. So if you open up scene relighting, you can increase the relight strength. Usually I keep it at 100. Now the subject might look crazy right now. Why? Because you have relight humans separately. So he can control the relighting of the human or the subject separately. So we're gonna keep it this way. You can also control the saturation lately. So that looks very very beautiful and accurate. And by the way, if you want to check more of Luminar Sky Replacement, I had made a couple of videos where I also compared it with Photoshop and some more other features. Keep in mind those were in earlier versions of Luminar, so they were not as fast and they didn't have as many features as Luminar Neo. The next crazy amazing feature that instantly makes the subject stand out is none other than Portrait Bokeh AI. And it has so many more features and it's super fast. Take a look at this. So all you got to do is to open Portrait Bokeh AI. I'm just opening this image for the first time and just increase it and take a look, and just by moving a slider, have a look how fast it is. There is no editing here, watch that again. So this is zero, and this is 100. 
take a look. It is just happening in real time. This is really, really fast this time. And just by moving a slider, the subject has instantly stood out. By the way, if you open up the background, you can also control the depth right here. So it can control where the blurring starts. So does it start far away or does it start nearby? So you can bring it closer by moving it to the left and you can take it far away by moving it to the right. So I'm going to take it slightly to the left. You can also correct the edges if there are issues. You can also control the warmth if you wish. So if you want to make the out of focus areas warmer or cooler, that is also possible. I just wanted to show you that just by moving a slider, you can instantly make subject stand out. And if the selection is not proper, and if you want to bring anything to focus or defocus something, you can actually manually paint over that as well. By the way, I've made a complete video on Bokeh AI. That's on a previous version of Luminar. So it might not be as fast. And there may be some features missing, maybe not, I'm not sure. So you can check that out as well for so many tests. And also I've compared it with Photoshop. Moving on to the last filter and I've saved the best for the last. This is something which might not be best for a lot of people. But according to me, this is one of those underrated filters that most people ignore. This is one of those filters that just is the most awesome filter in Luminar AI, according to me. I'm sorry, Luminar Neo. I get mistaken all the time. By just using this one filter, this one slider, everything just gets better. If you had to edit your image and you didn't have a lot of time, you had probably one or two seconds, this is the slider. And it also creates a fantastic starting point. Let's take a look at this. And that feature is Enhance AI. All you got to do is to just increase Accent AI inside of Enhance AI. So there you go. It fixes the image. Here's the before, here's the after. Now I know that this is not a world-class edit right here, but that my friend was two seconds right? So if you go to something else, for example, let's start with this one. Now here we have to do some relighting because have a look, the closer areas are very dark. So we'll go to Relight AI and just brighten the nearby area slightly. And now if you go to Enhance AI, right? And if you just increase the Accent AI right here, just by doing that, have a look. Here's the before, here's the after, just by moving these sliders. It just fixes so much. On top of that, of course, you can just increase relighting even more, or you can go to edit. I believe that we might have to increase it a slight bit more. There you go. And control the depth a little bit. And if you go back to tools, take a look. This is just amazing. Luminar Neo is one crazy software. Now, this is a low resolution image that I have. It also is a PNG, it's not a wall. So the image might break up. So I'm giving you a warning. So this is an image by Daniel Corden. But the way Enhance AI works on this one is just <laughs> insane. Now, since it works in layers, you can apply a couple of them on top of each other. So let's go to Enhance AI, all right? Let's increase the Accent AI all the way to the right hand side. Take a look just by doing that just by doing that. So here is the before, here's the after. That's not enough, my friend. If you apply it one more time, so I closed it. Let's apply it one more time. Take a look at it. This is just crazy. Now, I know the dark areas have too much blue, so you can control it right here by just decreasing the shadows and all that. And on top of that, you can also go to landscape and just increase the golden hour and the foliage enhancer, not maybe the foliage enhancer, dehaze a little bit and take a look. This is just magic. So here's the before, here's the after. Just by moving enhance a lot and a little bit of landscape, it, there you have it. So if you're a casual photo editor and you don't want to spend a lot of time behind the screen, Luminar Neo, as you already saw, is hands down the best thing out there. And that's more than you need. If you look at it, it's one of the only programs that come with a complete set of AI tools for all kinds of photography, making photo editing extremely simple. And if you are a professional, Luminar Neo gives you an incredible set of AI tools that you can use as a plugin for your Photoshop or Lightroom workflow. So you can use as one of the tools as a complement to what you already do with Photoshop or Lightroom. So for me personally, let's say I want to replace the sky. Let's say I want to add some mood to our photo. Let's say I want to do some background blur, some portrait bokeh AI. So then I would open up the Luminar Neo plugin for Photoshop and do it there. Now with any automatic feature, there will always be this limitation in manual control. But with Luminar Neo, since it comes in layers, these can be easily overcome like we did with the relight example where we had issues around the edge. So we created another layer of relight and control it our way. If you're interested in checking out Luminar Neo with the highest available discount, check the links in the description. There might be some codes, some links. So whatever highest is available, it will be updated. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I could show you something new. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other feature tips, tricks, or tutorials. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. What can I do?